Good evening. Uh, could you give me a short introduction? Sure. My name is Tom de Bulle. I work for the company Purple Transport Logistics and I've been uh, expatriated uh, to Australia for three and a half years. Um, and that was about two years ago. So okay. I have been here about two years. Yeah. I'm going to ask you a few questions regarding your uh, expat experience in Australia. Cool. So, um, uh, about uh, living abroad, did you like living in Australia more than you live, uh, lived here in Belgium? Um, I would say so, yes. Um, Australia is a very open country, it's a very open culture, and it is um, a very uh, nice work-life balance in Australia, so because of that, um, I must say I liked it a lot, uh, yeah. living and working in Australia. So in Belgium, the work balance was less appealing than in I think so. Australia. I think it's a little more stressing you know, in, 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 in Europe in general. Uh, I think the work pressure is a little bit higher. And also because of the weather, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, we uh, unfortunately we cannot be outside uh, as much as people in Australia are yeah. all the time. Have they, is there a bad weather sometimes in uh, Australia? It, sometimes, but it's it typically doesn't take that long. Uh, there are some heavy, heavy storms, uh, especially in the cities where I live, in Sydney and Melbourne. But, uh, I mean, you have maybe four or five storms per year, but you also have ten months of sunshine per year. Okay. So, I mean, so, it's fairly simple to, uh, yeah. to make that decision. Yeah, completely. And uh, was it the same, or were there many differences in Australia compared to Belgium? Uh, I think the biggest uh, the biggest difference uh, is the weather, as I just said. But then next to that as well, if you look at the way people live there and the way um, you go to work, for instance, a typical working day in Australia starts at seven. You go for a run. You're at the office at eight. You work until four, and then you go to the beach. So that's definitely a big difference, first yeah. of all. Uh, but it's also a very nice uh, nice way of, of, of working and living at the same time. Yeah, yeah, I could imagine. And how was uh, the working environment in Australia? It's a little bit different than Europe uh, in general. Um, I think in Australia, working, um, I, was, I was doing commercial work there, so I was, I was doing a lot of sales, uh, sales um, at a transport company. So it basically means that uh, these people don't have a lot of time and they don't have time for bullshit. So they want to, they want to be straight at the point, which is a lot yeah. different here in Europe, especially if you go to Holland, for instance, there's a lot of talking and, and talking and talking without really saying something. Uh, and in Australia, when you say something, it has to mean something. Um, so uh, that's definitely different. Uh, but also, in general, um, the colleagues, I mean, there's a lot more open culture uh, amongst colleagues then. Um, and that also stimulates you and bring the best out of you in order to do your job so, uh, in a proper way. So uh, would you say it's m more uh, the working environment in Australia is more to your liking than in Belgium? I would say so, yeah, absolutely. Um, maybe I'm also um, um, a little bit, uh, or my taste is a little bit color because uh, I only experienced one employer uh, in, in Australia and it was the same employer as I had in, in Belgium, which basically means that um, I pretty much worked for the same com company, so the working culture was a little bit the same, but at the same time in fun amongst, amongst colleagues as well, you're, you're really a part of the team, um, yeah. and that's that's within the roots of their culture, that has nothing to do with work in general, yeah. that's just who they are. And are there also uh, highlighting uh, cult uh, cultural differences, like in China, for example, if you give your uh, a working card to someone, you have to hand it with both hands, because yes. if you hand it with one hand, it's uh, impolite. Not it's really, to be honest, honest uh, I, think the main, I think the main thing that you have to do uh, in Australia is uh, just be real, be you, be, yeah. who, be who you are, uh, and uh, um, there's not a lot of specific etiquette or specific things you need to worry about or think about, no. uh, except be polite uh, um, yeah. and just yeah, be who you are, that's yeah. the most important And thing. is yeah. there also... Uh, do you notice the hierarchy in the company there? There's a lot more politics, yes. Yeah, yes, more there's politics. a lot more politics, yes. Yeah. Uh, in general, in business, there's uh, I've, I have the feeling that the politics are there mainly because uh, a piece of job protection as well. Typically, the Australians have the higher functions in companies and yeah. all the migrants are a little bit lower. Um, that's not all the time, but, but most of the times that's the, that's the case. Uh, and then, of course, yeah, because of the politics, it's... Uh, Sometimes it's less easy to uh, uh, to accomplish your goals because you're blocked on several political levels, which 
Yeah. And um, now I'm gonna ask you a few questions about adapting abroad. Was it hard getting adapted there in the beginning? Absolutely. In the beginning, it's not never easy. Uh, you go to yeah. a new country and you have to uh, look for an apartment. You have to look for a car. You have to understand social security. You have to understand tax tax laws. Uh, there's the travel. There's also stress that comes with the travel. With abandoning your house uh, in, yeah. your, in your in your country where you live, where I was living in Belgium, uh, finding something new. So that's definitely challenging in the beginning. Now, as soon as you go over that, go as soon as you overcome those challenges, typically that happens the first six months. Uh, you can relax a lot more and and you can you can flow into the lifestyle or in the life that you yeah. that you have there, uh, which makes it easier again. Uh, but still, the, the differences are all the time present. Uh, difference in, co in culture, differences in, 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 in meeting people as well. Um, so yeah, it was hard in the beginning, but after yeah. a while, I but then what things. you said about the social security and that, you had to study something, no? Or how did they? How did you learn those things? Well, um, luckily, I, I I was in contact because of my employer. I was in contact with a company that helped me a little bit on that piece. Um, but yes, you need to know, of course. Uh, um, you compare it a little bit to Belgium, first of all. I mean, you know, you know what you pay in Belgium. You know what yeah. you arrange. You know uh, how your uh, how your medical insurance, etc., is 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 is, uh, is worked out here. And then you basically look for the same uh, yeah. methods over there. Uh, luckily, I did a, a piece of that before I actually left. But there's still a lot of surprises as soon as right. you land, as soon as your feet hit the ground. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that comes at you, and sometimes you don't know what to do. But I mean, at the end of the day, you overcome everything. Yeah, things, so. and. Uh, was it hard not seeing your family? That's definitely a hard part. I mean, it's, it's far away. It's a 30 hour trip from door to door, uh, from where we live in Belgium to where we live in Germany. Um, so yes, um, you do miss your family. You do get yeah. homesick sometimes, uh, but then you enjoy life over there and you, you take what's, you, you say carte bien, take what's there and yeah. day, and you just enjoy yourself over there and overcome that, that homesickness. Uh, luckily, I could travel back and forth uh, to Belgium fairly often. Uh, which of course helped as well, um, and my expat uh, contract was 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 set in the, the, for the time was fixed, so I knew eventually at what time approximately okay. I could back I, I could go back home. Yeah. So that also helped with the homesickness and uh, with, with missing family. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, for my final question, for my conclusion, if you had to choose now to go back and work in Australia for another five more years, would you do it? Um. I wouldn't do it now, uh, immediately, because I just I just uh, had a, a beautiful baby girl, so yeah. that makes it a little bit hard at the moment to do it. But if the opportunity would rise again, I would definitely do it because uh, uh, it's a great country. Everybody should go there, um, and uh, it's again it's a great work-life balance. So I would definitely do it again uh, when it fits into yeah. uh, my family plan. And would you consider also another country for say they say to you? You have to go for two years to China. Would you consider it? Um, it depends a little bit on 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 the on the accommodations and on on the on the, on the formats that you could go uh, to a certain country. I would not sure. I would not say yes to any country they offer me. No. Uh, for instance, China. There would have to be a few good conditions to the contract before yeah. I would go to China. Um, but I never say no. Uh, but my preference at this time would definitely still go to Australia. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you for your time. No worries. You're very welcome. Wish you good luck with your studies. Thank you. No worries.